Thank you so much for coming to this event. Um, this is the Female and Most Summit 2022 and we are super excited to have you in this meeting. I must say that I'm very excited to be here this morning. Um, I came across this um, platform on Facebook and I was very interested in it. So I decided to register and throughout my learning phase, it has been, um, it has impacted me a lot. I'm very, very happy to be here. While I was in school until now, female and more has kind of inspired me and motivated me a lot. I would like to quickly just quote Mandy Hill who said that strong women don't play the victim. They don't make themselves look pitiful and they don't point fingers. They stand and they deal. So as women, we'll be standing and be dealing no matter what. Welcome to this very wonderful occasion. I'm very excited to see our students here. I'm very excited to see our guests. I'm very excited to see every one of you here. So today we'll be having a panel discussion. So I want to start with asking you, um, I'm going to ask Ubedet Ojo. So what does self-esteem mean to you? Can you define self-esteem? Self-esteem to me is self-worth, your value, how you see, regard, and think of yourself among other people. And in human beings in general. Self-esteem means a confidence or satisfaction from oneself. Alright. Self-esteem um, is the ability to believe in yourself. You have self-confidence. You see yourself as equal with others. I think self-esteem has to do with your mind. Who you have really inside. What you think that you can do. And doing it very well. I think that's what self-esteem means. So for me, self-esteem refers to the confidence that you you put in yourself and the things that you do and the things that you want to achieve. You all participated in the Female and More School Outreach Program. For 30 days, you read stories of different African women doing great things, moving against all odds to achieve greatness. Which of the stories stood out for you and why? Fiona Mutesi. She was wonderful. Actually, I thought playing games, all these sport things is not my thing. Because if you are doing I'll be like, all of you cannot go and read that. You be playing, doing nonsense. I used to be like, read, read, read your book. But when I read Fiona Mutesi's story, I was really touched. I almost started crying because I felt if someone's life can change so much just because you play chess, who am I not to play games? So I just told myself from today, Monopoly, bring it. Ludo, bring it. I will play. I must go. I thank you. Okay, the story that stood out to me the most was Amina Salawi. Um, when I was seven, I got my glasses. I hated it because people were calling me handicapped. I didn't like that word. I was just like, I'm not handicapped. But my dad was like, No, they are right. You are handicapped. You can't see. So it hurt me. And Reading her story, just, okay, she became paralyzed and she didn't let her being paralyzed stop her. She created an organization that helps other people with being paralyzed and that made me realize that, you know, I'm wearing my glasses and so what? People insulted me, your head is too small or it's too big for your glasses, you can see through my mind. <laughs> so many comments but through that i just know that from her story i just know that i can be much more even with my glasses do you think the program helped you boost your self-esteem and tell us how it did so if you had a low self-esteem and this program was able to help you or improve your self-esteem okay my problem was i used to feel like i'm fat so when i'm moving i don't actually know how to carry myself but that's actually why i don't participate in sport if I jump from volleyball, I'll fall, injure my leg. So I don't participate in anything that has to do with me exercising my body so much. But when I started with female and more, I realized that this is where... Actually, I just used to laugh about it when people say, you are fat, go and reduce. So when I, female and more motor came, I realized that, do I laugh about it? I actually still feel bad about it. And then I realized I don't just have to leave it there, I have to work on it. So I started with sit-up every morning. Sitting up, trying to lose weight, 
And reading the book, going through everything, I realized that I can't do this. And now I'm kind myself. Thank you. Kimi <laughs> Amo has really impacted me positively. Um, the kind of person that feels shy when I'm on my period. Um, I don't talk to people about it. I feel very difficult to stand up from my seat. I always feel like I'm staying. I feel like I'm the old one among persons if I'm seeing a menstruation. But through the help of the female and wife, I find that that's one of the things that make women unique. That is only for the pressure and to not be ashamed of it. Okay, so one thing I have taken away from the first panel session is that being female and more is beyond physical beauty and appearance. At this point, I would like to just quickly welcome Angelina. She's going to be speaking very briefly. Thank you, everyone, and good morning. As you can see from the smile on my face, female amour is fantastic. <laughs> the girls, when they saw me, one girl came out to me and said, Without anything but that means back because you are here. Look at you. I say yes. There's part the disability. It doesn't stop me as a female. And there are some story in the book, female and more books, that are so inspiring. And they read it. They are so excited. And they say, why can't the government put it in the syllabus so that our female is Okay, um, so I'll be leading the sweetest panel um, in this event today. I have the privilege to sit in conversation with um, some of the ladies um, out of the 15 who came top 15 from the Female and More Social Impact Fellowship. And then it's not everyone who came up with a project idea who went on to do um, a project in their community and go through all the stress to be sent here. So I'd like to ask us, um, I don't know who would like to go first, but I think I want everyone to tell me this morning and everyone here, uh, what was your motivation? What motivated you to go through the entire process? Okay, my name is Blessing Alims, and I love being addressed as Alims B, the shoemaker girl. My project was start walking in her shoes. Okay, I work basically with persons living with disabilities. That was what my project was centered on. What inspired me to go this far? I discovered that young girls and women with disabilities in Nigeria, not just my community, face triple-fold challenge. First, as women. Second, as women with disabilities. And third, as women with no economic power. So this is what inspired me to carry out this project for persons with disabilities. My name is Olamide Blessing Favor and the name of my project is Fabi Park Initiative. It was done at Ileife, Ocean State, Nigeria. What actually inspired me to carry out this project is that Fabi Park Initiative under the Female and Social Impact Fellowship is because having gone on a research and saying that there is a low level of awareness on menstrual hygiene management among the young school girls in my community. I decided to go into that aspect because it's our collective responsibility to make sure that young girls have the right information about their bodies and safe spaces to address their concerns before their first period. My name is Evening Friday Udofia. I carried out a project titled Rescue HI Part 100 Girls. It was carried out at Ibaja, Ayobo, Lagos, Nigeria, with particular emphasis on including people living with disabilities. I realized that there is a high level of segregation. You know, people living with disabilities are always left out. If you go to schools to organize campaigns, in my previous campaign before Female and More, came on board, I would actually go to schools or organize campaigns for just, you know, normal people. But with Female and More, I was able to include, include people living with special needs because I realized that they also go through these challenges that we go through. My name is Chiokai Elizabeth Deshi. The name of my project is Deaf Girl Arise. Arise is acronym for Awareness, 
to raise inspiration for sexually abused to excel. In just Plato State where I live, I volunteer with an organization, Deaf Technology Foundation, and a lot of girls there were getting pregnant, teenage girls. So I thought that was a problem that needed to be addressed, mostly because those girls who get pregnant, of course, will drop out of school and that is the end for them because, of course, they are deaf to start with. Nobody really regards them because our society is not inclusive. That they have added to that, that they are not educated. There wouldn't be any much that they can give to the society at the end of the day. So, um, we went to try to understand why exactly are deaf girls getting pregnant because it was a trend. It is a trend rather. And after questioning them, you know, creating a safe space with some of them, we got to find out that a lot of them were raped earlier in their lives, some of them still being raped. People take advantage of their impairment and get them sexually involved. My name is Ofwan Bokumo. You can see me, I'm already dressed in my organization's uh, shirts. I'm the founder and executive director of Good News Livelihood Foundation, which focuses on the providing humanitarian service and healthcare services to rural communities. And uh, my project, I had to uh, carry out in two settings, a secondary school in a rural community and also a special school to reach out to the people living with disabilities because that has been my focus. I also run uh, rehabilitation services for people who are visually impaired. Thank you. That's why it's echoing. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And uh, it's 16 days of activism against gender based violence. So, as you can imagine, I have a lot of uh, meetings that I have to speak out. I apologize for not being here at the beginning. I joined briefly earlier, but I had to attend another meeting. I want to thank you all for attending this feeling and more session and I see that I have several partners here. I want to recognize all of you, ladies and gentlemen. I would not want to call uh, specific names or organizations, but really uh, to appreciate the commitment to this work and to appreciate the commitment to helping uh, get our young women and girls uh, to be more confident, to be more assertive, and to also take their place in society. We know that inequality thrives in our country and in West Africa and around the world because several roles and responsibilities are assigned uh, by society through social norms and culture for different agendas. And we know that women and girls get the short end of the stick. Programs like this that help to build the voice, the power, and the agency of women and girls are critical if we are to go. Uh, bridge the So you are ambassadors. Uh, for many of you here today, you are ambassadors to, to change the narrative. You are ambassadors to say women and girls deserve to have their voice, their power, and their agency. Just as anyone else in society, nothing should hold us back. Nothing should stop us from achieving what we want to achieve or from being. Uh, what we want to be. All right, so right now we will be having uh, the goodwill message from the investigative journalist, actress, activist, MC, on air personality, humanitarian, feminist. Do I keep going? Because she's so many things in one. Motivational speaker and also the executive director at Dorothy in Jemanji Foundation. Please, a round of applause for her. She comes up. Thank you very much. Um, um, something that makes me stand out for those who do not know is that Nigeria is the first country to be pronounced by a, a, a court to uh, be guilty of gender-based violence. And that's in the Dorothy Germanzi and three others versus the Federal Republic of Nigeria case. The Maputo Protocol, which a lot of people who are senior activists that I look up to, you know, um, came up with that and, and now I have put it to use and you know through a strategic litigation and since after then several other courts judgments have cited the Maputo protocol 
So develop yourself. Remember that as women, as female, we are not homogeneous. We have different realities and our different realities intersect. But by the way, we are female and we are born. My conviction is that uh, female are as equal as any other gender. Female are as equal as any other gender. I always say to people, um, you can't quantify human dignity. You can't say this person's dignity is more. No. Sometimes what we try to use dignity to qualify as materialism is no. Because human dignity is intrinsic. It, it's granted by God. You came with it. That sense of dignity, you were born with it. I met a young girl who is the only engineering student at the University of Abuja. And she said even when the lecturers come, they ask her, what are you doing here? The University of Abuja. I'm not talking a story. We're talking. Right? Then it goes on to this classes. Who are the monitors? Boys. Assistant monitor. Yes. Who is school prefect? Boys. Assistant school prefect. Yes. Girls, you need to start fighting. Yes. I don't mean physical fighting like this. You need to start challenging that. So next time they're asking for who wants to be class monitor, raise your hand. And if the school says for boys, ask the school, why is it for boys? Where is it written? So that's what female and more is about. Our conviction, my personal conviction, is that the female is as equal, 100% equal to any other gender.